Old Soldiers Never Die could well be the theme of the closing chapters of the book of Joshua, as this old soldier of the Lord was getting ready to die. In his final two messages, Joshua was still fighting the fight and standing strong for God. Joshua was Moses' assistant and successor. He was an ex-spy along with Caleb. He served as a military field commander, was a spiritual disciple of Moses when he accompanied him up the mountain to receive the Torah. As Israel's new leader after Moses, he functioned as a military commander in taking the land of Canaan and as an administrator in allotting the land. Joshua served as a model for all of Israel's future kings. He was a leader possessing the Lord's spirit and having a prophetic sanction. He was both a military genius and a spiritual giant. He stirred up the faith of his army by ceremony, word, and life. He demanded of them exact obedience to the Lord's word. Number 1. The First Message Joshua chapter 23, verses 1-5, through 5, New King James Version Now it came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest to Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua was old, advanced in age. And Joshua called for all Israel, for their elders, for their heads, for their judges, and for their officers, and said to them, I am old, advanced in age. You have seen all that the Lord your God has done to all these nations because of you, for the Lord your God is he who has fought for you. See, I have divided to you by lot these nations that remain, to be an inheritance for your tribes, from the Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off as far as the great sea westward. And the Lord your God will expel them from before you and drive them out of your sight. So you shall possess their land as the Lord your God promised you. In his message to the leaders, Joshua reminded them of everything the Lord had done and would continue to do. They won battle after battle because the Lord battled for them and he promised to be with them and drive out any residual pockets of resistance. The triumphs granted to Israel by the Lord remind us that when Jesus died on the cross, he won the victory over sin. Our great war ends when we accept him as our savior. In the blood of Jesus, our sins are forgiven and overcome. However, when we live the Christian life, we may encounter some pockets of opposition. We must assert our victory in Christ over our daily struggles. Joshua chapter 23, verses 6 and 7, New King James Version Therefore, be very courageous and keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, lest you turn aside from it to the right hand or to the left, and lest you go among these nations, these who remain among you. You shall not make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause anyone to swear by them. You shall not serve them, nor bow down to them. This is the final sermon of Joshua. Joshua discussed the prescription for success, which was similar to what God had instructed him years before. Living inside the framework of understanding, trusting, and obeying God's word is the key to victory. The notion of separation was part of Joshua's prescription. As God's offspring, we must continuously remind ourselves that we are unique and do not worship anything of this world. Joshua chapter 1 verse 7, New King James Version. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. However, we must recognize that worldliness in the life of a Christian is not a leap in the perilous waters from a great height. Normally, it is a slow slip of compromise. A little worldliness here, a little wickedness there. We'd lost touch before we knew it. To avoid worldliness, we must remove everything from our lives that displeases the Lord and prevents us from being the witnesses for Jesus that God desires us to be. Joshua chapter 23, verse 8, New King James Version but you shall hold fast to the Lord your God, as you have done to this day. Consecration is the second winning principle. The phrase, hold fast, signifies to be bonded or completely consecrated to the Lord. In this world, half-hearted dedication will not suffice. Joshua chapter 23, verse 11, New King James Version. Therefore, take careful heeds to yourselves, that you love the Lord your God. Devotion is the third principle. The key to separation and consecration is unconditional love for God. If we love Him, we can devote ourselves completely to Him and distance ourselves from everything that contradicts Him. Joshua chapter 23, verses 12-16, through 16, New King James Version 
or else, if indeed you do go back and cling to the remnant of these nations, these that remain among you, and make marriages with them, and go in to them and they to you, know for certain that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps to you, and scourges on your sides and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from this good land which the Lord your God has given you. Therefore it shall come to pass, that as all the good things have come upon you which the Lord your God promised you, so the Lord will bring upon you all harmful things, until he has destroyed you from this good land which the Lord your God has given you. When you have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God which he has commanded you, and have gone and served other gods and bowed down to them, then the anger of the Lord will burn against you, and you shall perish quickly from the good land which he has given you. Joshua also cautioned the children of Israel to remain steadfast in their devotion to the Lord. If we choose sin, our sins will become snares, traps, scourges, and thorns. Sin may begin sweetly, but we cannot get away with it as God's children. Joshua reminded the leaders once more that God could be relied on to uphold His promises to grant or withhold His blessing. Number 2. The Final Message Joshua chapter 24 verses 1 through 12, New King James Version. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel, for their heads, for their judges, and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Nahor, dwelt on the other side of the river in old times, and they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river, led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his descendants, and gave him Isaac. To Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau I gave the mountains of Seir to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Also I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt, according to what I did among them. Afterward I brought you out. Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea. And the Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. So they cried out to the Lord, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, brought the sea upon them, and covered them. Your eyes saw what I did in Egypt. Then you dwelt in the wilderness for a long time, and I brought you into the land of the Amorites, who dwelt on the other side of the Jordan, and they fought with you. But I gave them into your hand, that you might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose to make war against Israel, and sent and called Balaam the son of Beor to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam, therefore he continued to bless you. So I delivered you out of his hand. Then he went over the Jordan and came to Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you, also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. But I delivered them into your hand. I sent the hornet before you which drove them out from before you, and also the king of the Amorites, but not with your sword or with your bow. Following that, Joshua assembled the entire congregation and shared messages from the Lord. God reminded them of what he had done 17 times, beginning with Terah, Abraham's father. Why did God go over their history and emphasize the phrase, I did this? He was reminding them of the grace he has shown them throughout their lives. Our salvation, too, is not based on our goodness. Rather, we are saved by God's grace and have access to all of our spiritual blessings via the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, New King James Version. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, New King James Version. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15, New King James Version. Now therefore, fear the Lord, 
Serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Following God's commands, Joshua presented the people with a choice. Joshua used the word serve 15 times in the rest of the chapter. Their responsibility is the same as ours, to serve the Lord. The Lord expects us to live for Him and serve Him if we are saved. Joshua's verb tense implies, I have chosen and I will continue to choose. Choosing to serve the Lord is not only an initial decision, it's also a daily decision that we must reinforce. Joshua chapter 24, verses 16 through 27, New King James Version. So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, including the Amorites who dwelt in the land. We also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do harm and consume you, after he has done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, but we will serve the Lord. So Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord for yourselves to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore, he said, Put away the foreign gods which are among you, and incline your heart to the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made for them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. Then Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness to us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord which he has spoken to us. It shall therefore be a witness to you, lest you deny your God. Although the people pledged to serve God, Joshua's reaction suggests that he was aware that some of them were covertly worshipping idols at the time. He held them responsible for their actions and challenged them to demolish their gods and turn their hearts to the Lord. Joshua then formed a covenant with the people, had it written down in the law, and had a stone constructed to mark the pledge. Regrettably, we know what transpired later. Despite everything the Lord had done for Israel, they still rejected Him and paid dearly for their sins. This can serve as a reminder that the Christian life is difficult. We should never be filled with self-confidence. Instead, we should have faith in the Lord. Our strength must come from Him. Joshua chapter 24, verse 29, New King James Version. Now it came to pass after these things that Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. Joshua died at the age of 110, but his testimony ensured that his legacy lived on. That is why old soldiers never die. Let us pray to God to help us live in such a way that our influence for Jesus Christ will carry on after we're gone. Joshua's farewell speech urged Israel to stay passionately committed to God. Joshua reminded the people of God's faithfulness, warned them against disobedience, and concluded, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. Everyone followed Joshua's convictions during his lifetime, for he made them both attractive and magnetic.